Hello, and welcome to the second installment of the Enterprise Best Practice blog. My name is Neil Donalevich, Principal Architect for Versa Networks. This week, we'll be focusing on keys, their importance to SD-WAN, and why every enterprise should be worried about the keys. As we all know, enterprises contain information that is both public and private, and it is the duty of the enterprise to protect the private information, whether that be the intellectual property of the enterprise, the financials of the enterprise, customer subscription information, payment history, or other information that is required to be safeguarded due to regulations, both industry standard and federal. Now, safeguarding information has not, is not just a recent concern. Societies, governments, armies have all been worried about protecting information. In fact, Julius Caesar was so worried that the communications between his generals and himself would be in intercepted by the enemy that he recreated what is known as the Caesar cipher. Now, this cipher was simplistic in its design. It was based upon the Roman alphabet, and it was one of the first to use a key. In this case, the key was just a uh, numerical transposition of the letters in case, in this case, in the example you see here, where the key is plus five. In this way, you can encode a message, I will arrive tomorrow, in such a way that it would not be easily read by the enemy unless they understood what the transposition was. The problem with the Caesar cipher is that it was simplistic in its design. Both sides needed to know the key, and the key only had 23 unique values which means that it would take a human only between 15 minutes and an hour to actually go through all the possible combinations and actually figure out the encrypted message. Modern day compute, less than a second. With keys being so important, let's look at what other attributes we can use in the keys to actually make them source more secure. The first attribute is length. Now, Keys these days should be somewhere between 128 bits in length or preferably 256 bits in length. But let's explore why that's important. So if I have a key that only has two digits, then I only have a certain number of uh, computations and I probably could go through that as a human very quickly, even if I was using alphanumeric, which would be 26 values in both of them. However, if I make my key significantly longer, now it's going to take me a lot longer to go through all the different combinations. So length is good, but it is susceptible to brute force attacks. Because while it may take a human a while to go through this many, it will not take a computer that much to go through it. The second attribute is storage. Imagine a device where the key is stored locally, unencrypted. All a hacker or threat actor would need to do is gain access to that device, and then he would have the manner in order to compromise the network. Additionally, if the key is sent unencrypted on the wire, all the hacker has to do is intercept it. For this reason, network equipment utilizes a hash algorithm to actually morph the key into a value that can later be unhashed and utilized. However, these hash algorithms often can be insecure or have vulnerabilities that allows the hacker still to be able to figure out what the key is. Asymmetrical key exchange creates a more secure connection as a public key is created and shared with the other side. The other side utilizes this public key to encrypt the data, but the public key is insufficient to decrypt it. The private key from the receiver is needed in order to decrypt the information. However, if the device is compromised and the private key is readable, your security risk still exists. A trusted platform module, or TPM chip, can mitigate this by making the private key unreadable from outside sources. Tampering with or attempting to destroy the TPM chip would render the private key unreadable and the device unusable. This works very well in hardware-based platforms. However, in the modern day of VNF and virtualized functions, this does not work well if you're using virtual services. 
A more secure solution would only exchange part of the key and have an algorithm to actually validate the partial key based upon negotiated terms and elements that were secret to both sides. In this manner, no device would ever actually have all the necessary parts to reassemble the key. Therefore, compromising the device and trying to get the information out of it would provide no useful information in order to compromise the enterprise network. Also, the key then would never have to be stored. It could actually be computed for every packet that needed to be encrypted or decrypted. In fact, this is the exact solution developed by Versa. Each node creates a unique key based upon two negotiated terms, a secret code known only to that node, and a partial key sent from the other side. This creates a unique secure key value, which can be rotated by changing the secret code and receiving a new partial key from the other side. This method also allows for asymmetrical encryption, where one unique key is used for the transmit traffic and another unique key is used for the receive traffic. Versus solution utilizes secret codes in excess of 250 bits in length and negotiated terms in excess of 1024 bits in length. Even if a hacker could gain all the necessary information, it would take him longer than the lifetime of the universe to actually crack the key. And by that time, the keys would have rotated and would be unusable. So a secure key solution should be one of sufficient length to make it impossible for one to guess the key. One in which the full key is never exchanged, where the key is not stored, but derived from extremely large values both negotiated and secret, and which is rotated in a sufficient time to prevent hacking and usage of the key. Until next week, when we discuss why a secure tiered network is needed to safeguard the enterprise, my name is Neil Donalovich. Thank you.